Welcome to today's summary of waves and storms. Waves and storms produce distinctive sedimentary structures because of the current flows. With waves, the water switches directions on the time scale of a second or so. And with storms, you have a succession of increasing water energy with a combination of waves and currents, followed by decreasing energy as the storm moves away. So let's start with waves. So the water in a wave travels in a circle. So if the wind is blowing to the right here, the path of a particle of water as the wave passes goes in a clockwise direction. Now, when the wave uh, approaches the bottom and the circular motion of the water gets close to the bottom, the water can't move up or down, so it tends to move back and forth. Now, as we know from the sediment transport processes, this motion back and forth is fast enough to transport sediments. It will form a bed form. And what happens with the wave ripples is you have a little transport in one direction and then the other. So it forms a ripple shape. And when the flow is flowing to the right, you get a little deposition on the right side of the ripple. But the flow switches directions in a minute or two and erodes off a little bit of that previous deposition, deposits more on the left when the water is going to the left. So every few seconds, the lamina switch directions. So you end up with both erosion and deposition on both sides of the ripple. That results in a structure that is fairly symmetric um, with both flow directions, and you have lamina dipping on both sides of the flow. Okay, so storms have a combination of large waves often, and also currents. When a storm comes in, it tends to drive water up onto the land as it approaches the shore, and then as the storm moves off, the uh, water tends to flow offshore. So for storms, you have a combination of waves and currents. So if we look at the stratigraphic column, where we have thickness uh, versus grain size, so we have mud, fine, medium, and coarse sand here. For an offshore environment, maybe we have the slow settling of mud from suspension shown here. When a storm comes in, the currents are increasing with time and it can bring sand from onshore where the, the flow speeds are generally higher and you have coarser grain sediments, can bring that offshore. However, generally uh, as the storm progresses, the flow speeds increase. So you might get temporary deposition, but often the base of the storm deposit is erosional. So we show that with the, the wavy line. And then as the storm leaves, the area, the flow speeds tend to slow down. So you often have the coarsest sand, sometimes even pebbles, deposited at the base of the storm, and the grain size gets smaller and smaller as the storm leaves. Often, this lower part of the storm deposit is massive, and as the flow slows down and the grain size is finer, we tend to get what we call hummocky cross stratification. Now, hummocky cross stratification uh, is a result of the, the complicated changing flows that are produced by storms. So you have a combination of waves and currents that produces an irregular or hummocky surface. And you get a little bit of deposition in different directions at different times as those currents and waves are shifting around. So you get the hummocky cross stratification, often abbreviated HCS, and then as the currents slow down, you might still have some large waves, and so you commonly get wave ripples on the upper parts of these flows, which we show um, with wavy lines commonly. And then the storm slows down, um, goes away, you might still have some suspended sediment, and you end up with maybe a little bit of silt sometimes wave ripple, and then you return to the normal uh, conditions for storm deposition. So the process of a typical storm deposit is represented by a higher energy than average event, 
often erosion, particularly closer to shore, less erosion further from shore where the energies are lower. Uh, but as the storm wanes, you get a decrease in grain size, and there's often evidence of ripples, and then a return to the background sedimentation. Thanks for watching.